Hello, friends of Shiatsu. My name is Stefan Kuyper, Shiatsu practitioner in Brussels, Belgium. The name of my practice is Shinmon Shiatsu. And um, my purpose is to share with uh, English speaking colleagues and friends and interested uh, people in Shiatsu what I usually write in French. And this is research on Shiatsu. Think about Shiatsu. Think about our technique. And uh, today's topic will be the Shiatsu points. Hence the title, Let's Go to the Point. So, um, if you think about points, you, of course, see lots of books and charts with uh, lots of points and numbers and names. And um, it can be interesting to, to question all this. Where does it come from? What does it mean? And what do we use them for? Where do they come from? The points, that's the first, first topic, uh, the origin of all that. Uh, we can trace back in history to ancient China. Um, and uh, I read uh, the book by Jacques-André Lavier, who was a French uh, professor and acupuncturist, very famous in his time, uh, a very curious mind, and uh, also liked uh, symbolic very much. So Professor Lavier wrote the book Histoire de l'acupuncture, where he tells a nice story about uh, the origin of points. And that nice story is uh, people went to war and one of these warriors got an arrow stuck in his leg. And of course, after the battle, they had to remove that and they removed the arrow. And then they discovered, he discovered that the pain he always had in his leg uh, had vanished. And little by little, they discovered when, when you put a sharp uh, object, sharp thing like an arrow in some parts of the body, pain was removed. And um, they discovered also that this was always at places, hollow places in the body. The belief at that time was when you were ill that a gi, and I show you the Chinese character for gi, um, was responsible. And a gi was a kind of evil spirit or ghost. Um, so he took advantage of a moment of weakness to get into your body and you became ill. And they discovered that when putting arrows and other sharp things into the body, you could kill the gi and so remove the illness. So they began to make a list of those uh, special points for treatment. And uh, these special points, Lavier believes, are the famous 13 ghost points, which are still in use today by acupuncturists and shiatsu practitioners, and which are said to be quite delicate or dangerous to, to practice because of their heavy psychological impact today still called the 13 ghost points. In Japan, that same character for gi, I, show you, I showed you, um, is used for a oni. I showed you what an oni is. Oni is a, is a yokai, means a fantastic creature. Japanese have lots of yokai. And a gi is a kind of, kind of giant, cruel, living being in the mountains. Um, and to the, still today, uh, Japanese don't go to places which are known uh, for, as, as a residence for, for Oni. So, kind of an evil meaning behind all that. There's a, there are other theories, other stories, like, for instance, the one by Dr. Kao Kim Long, who is a Vietnamese acupuncturist, another branch of acupuncture again. Eh? Uh, he says that practice of points goes back to Neanderthal. Neanderthal, you know, the, the prehistoric man uh, from the Neolithic, um, another race. Uh, who existed together with the Homo sapiens. 
And he said Neanderthal, they were hunters and they went, they went for days to hunt and uh, they were very tired and they relieved pain they had in the legs or in the limbs by, by, by hitting themselves with sharp stones. And that would be, according to Dr. Kao Kim Long, the origin of acupuncture. It doesn't matter so much whether this is all true or not, at least for Eastern people, you know, we like, in, in the West, we always like to have historical evidence of, of what we say. In, in the East, they more like um, uh, the, the, the story in itself and what it means. And the meaning of the story is, to me, three different things. First one is acupuncture and points are very ancient, goes back to very ancient times. The second one is the empirical character of all that. They discovered it by chance and then began to practice again and again until it became evidence. And the third one being the long evolution of transmission. It's from the very beginning up to now, this has been passed to the following so that they can use it and our responsibility is to go ahead with that research again and and also try to discover things to build up the whole story interesting question was by friend by a friend and colleague fabian bastianelli why don't we have that in the west well maybe we had because uh, his point was when you look at Udzi. Udzi is kind of a mummy, prehistorical mummy they discovered in a gletscher in uh, Austria or Switzerland, I, I don't know anymore. But uh, they named him Udzi and Udzi was still completely intact because he had stayed in the, in the, in the cold, in the, in the frozen ice for thousands of years. And they discovered marks on his body that could be uh, related to, to treatments prehistoric men in the West gave uh, uh, at the time. There is also uh, that picture of uh, the cave of Cunyak I show you. Um, a man with lines through his body, maybe also these were energy lines and connected to the outside world because meridians were in the first place not no, no, no closed system uh, within the body, but they, they, they gave connection to, to the outside world. So maybe it all existed in Europe as well, but we lost it. And now maybe it is our duty in the story to bring it back to, to Europe. So that's for the origin of points. Um, we will uh, try in the second part to know how acupuncture or points are defined and you will see there are lots of definitions. So in this second part, let's have a look at definitions in books written by Shiatsu practitioners. My quotes are from French books. So um, let me put my glasses on to read them for you and translate at the same time. Elisabeth Hocha, 101 Key Notions of Chinese Medicine, is the title of her book. She says, located on meridians, points are steps of the building and rebuilding of a being. The different steps in an organized vital flow. Okay, very good. Shizuto Masunaga, you know him in, uh, in his book Shiatsu and Eastern Medicine. Tsubo, he calls points Tsubo, we will see why uh, in the third part of this video. Tsubo indicates precisely the part of the body on which treatment will have to be applied. And this part can be either a keiketsu, we will also see what that means, or a treatment point that has been defined according to pathology. Katsusuke Serizawa, another famous Japanese, has written a book with the title Tsubo, says points called Tsubo can be found along the 14 meridian systems spreading over the whole body and to the internal organs, although invisible 
to the eye, those points or tsubo are the places where it is easy for the energy flow in the meridian systems to become sluggish and stagnant. Another Japanese, my teacher, Yuichi Kawada, mentions in a leaflet he used to give his students called Dragon Horse by the Chinese. These are the places when you can apply pressure and work on the energetic flow. Ryokyu Endo, another Japanese contemporary uh, who is the founder of Tao Shiatsu, a branch of Shiatsu, Tsubos don't have a precise anatomical position. There are physiological hollow points changing according to circumstances. These are therapy points appearing above meridians, the gates through which you can reach them. Tsubos are hollow points lacking key. Bernard Boeret, French uh, practitioner, also one of my teachers, told us in a training session, in any part of the body, there is that exchange between heaven and earth, and it is called Tsubo. Jacques Pialou talks uh, in a very nice way about vital, vital points situated in the middle of dimples. And Maud Ernou, who is also a contemporary French practitioner, uh, says uh, uh, very shortly, Tsubos are points where energy concentrates. So, very different definitions, and we see that the practitioners consider each a different aspect they're interested in, or they practice more than another. You have philosophical, you have anatomical, even spiritual aspects behind those points. So if you want to know now what it is precisely, I'm afraid we'll have to take a look at the etymology. So that's how we might feel like the queen of the chess uh, game when looking at etymology, because, oh my lord, what's that? We find four different characters, which are all translated by the same word point into English, point in French, and two in Chinese, two in Japanese, and they're different. So let's try to, to discover what's behind that. And I put them in charts for you so that you can see at the same time when I'm explaining. You have two characters in Chinese, first one being Xue. My Chinese pronunciation is very bad, so please don't mind. But uh, Xue uh, is a, a hollow thing uh, which contains the ki. So that's a hollow part of the body. Remember, in the history of Shiatsu, we saw the first Chinese discovered the arrow could be put uh, efficiently in the hollow parts of the body. So it's a xue. It's a, it's a cave, in fact. And that cave, you can have a lack of ki or you can have an excess of ki. And according to that, you will have to supplement or you will have to drive excess ki away. So a cave on the body is a xue. You have a second word, which is pronounced shu, and shu is a cart, and a cart led by hand, so the idea of uh, something moving, streaming, and uh, shu is the word which is uh, in fact used for the points on the back, which are called yu in Japanese, and for the shu, the, in the antique shu points, you know, those five points on each meridian located between the hand and the elbow and between the knee and the foot. So the wu shu, the five, five shu, and the shu of the back. And xue and shu, we all translate by the same words, uh, which is points, but in fact, these are two, two big uh, categories. Kawada told us for the, the, the character Shu, that's in fact the right part of the, of the character, it, is, uh, it means digging, digging out the trunk of a tree so that you get rid of what's not necessary. 
but in fact, it is the same meaning. Shu Shu is uh, can be can be imagined, can be seen as uh, a place where there is exchange, when there is streaming of energy, getting rid of what's not necessary and letting coming what's necessary for the body. So, Xue and Shu, two different uh, names, <coughs> characters in Chinese to say points. In Japanese, we have two others. We have in the first place, uh, that's according to Mr. Masunaga, the, the, the character, in fact, two characters, Kei and Ketsu. Ketsu, you recognize on the chart. It is the same as Xue in Chinese, so means indeed the same, a hollow place on the body. And what's Kei? Kei uh, if, has the meaning of a silk thread, uh, a vertical line. Um, uh, uh, can translate it, it has been translated by Meridian, but we will see it's not the right translation as well. But vertical line, a Buddhist sutra, because that was all read on scrolls, vertical scrolls, and you know Japanese and the origin wrote vertically and from right to left. Uh, so the idea of verticality. So, but saying K. Ketsu, you, you have two meanings. You have a hollow part on a vertical line. And we may say, while reading that, that Japanese, in fact, always keep in mind that those points are located on vertical lines. And that will be important uh, for later. Second uh, name is in uh, Japanese is Tsubo. So, Tsubo means, the, the character means a jar. And um, Mr. Masunaga tells us that uh, Tsubo is in fact a keiketsu, so it is a point, a hollow part on a vertical line, but that calls for treatment. When you have a Tsubo, you have a pathology, and when you have a pathology, you need to give treatment. So you see two, two very different meanings to say the same thing because the Japanese consider, consider the very practical aspects of the thing when looking at points at Tsubo's you treat, while the Chinese consider it in a more, say, geographical way, uh, like a map with a points over the whole body. And that's an important point, because practicing Shiatsu, we practice Japanese art. And practicing Japanese art, we have to look at the way Japanese consider things. And the way Japanese consider things is always uh, very different from uh, the Chinese. They, of course, borrowed lots of things from the Chinese, but they turned it into something else. And um, this has been described, they do this for acupuncture points, but they do, do this for everything from food to alcohol, trains, cars. A Japanese car is a car, looks like a car, but it's not a Western car. They turned it into something else with sometimes very different functions. So the same for our purpose today, the points, and um, remember that, that uh, we have to consider the, the things the same way as the Japanese do, as we practice Shiatsu, and uh, not only focus on the Chinese origins of uh, our practice. That's uh, what Emile Stenilbert Berlin wrote a, a book in French about the, the Japanese kinds of Buddhism. He, he says, this is, the Japanese have their own genius. Uh, and uh, we have to, to, to consider it as well. Change of setting. This is the practice room at home. Um, if the Japanese have a specific way to look at things, do they have then specific categories of points? Um, maybe not in Shiatsu, we saw the two words, Keiketsu and Tsubo, but if we look at Anma, which is much more ancient than Shiatsu, the Japanese massage uh, practice, 
we see there are the keiketsu tsubo we know those two words already they are the keiketsu tsubo and the keiketsu tsubo are the points located outside of meridians and we have the aishi tsubo which are the natural points uh, the question uh, being then how many points are there in the body well, according to Dr. Chanfro, French acupuncturist as well, and wrote also uh, Traité de l'acupuncture, he says there are as many as the days of the years, which is a nice uh, symbolic way to say 360, 365, uh, but in fact much more than that. Uh, you know, uh, Eastern people like analogies and like symbolic. So many points and do we then use all of them in shiatsu certainly not um, we probably use uh, very few of them my guess would be between uh, 60 and, and 100 i mean in a regular way right? um, so we certainly don't use them all um, you know, there are some differences that are sometimes being made between Meridian Shiatsu and Tsubo Shiatsu. Two categories, eh? we in the West like to categorize things. Um, and Meridian Shiatsu, the most famous being the one by Mr. Matsunaga, and uh, Point uh, Tsubo Shiatsu, the most famous being the one by Mr. Namikoshi. Um, but um, as we have seen, the very word itself to say point, keiketsu, hollow place on a vertical line, means Japanese, in fact, all words consider on both aspects and keep them in mind. So practicing meridians, you know, there are points and practicing points, you know, they are located on meridians. So I, I wouldn't dare to make such a sharp distinction between different kinds of shiatsu but even if they put the emphasis more or less on some aspects of the practice um, and this makes me think a little uh, about uh, quantum physics uh, you know quantum physics if you consider the particle you can't see the wave and you, if you consider the wave you can't see the particle so there's a little the same in a, in a shiatsu it has a quantum aspect probably if you consider the meridian you will pay less attention and you won't see the points and that will be then the keiraku shiatsu the meridian shiatsu and if you consider the points uh, in the first place you will pay less attention to meridians and that would be then a tsubo shiatsu that's an explanation like another but as i said we don't have to make such sharp distinctions then just a word about the techniques we use to to treat uh, points according to mr serizawa who wrote that book about uh, tsubo he says in fact all shiatsu practices uh, originate in the traditional anma massage from japan and uh, there are many techniques we use. In fact, we, we use looking strictly at the etymology of shiatsu. Uh, apply pressure with the hand. That's what it means. The shi hand atsu. Apply pressure. Um, in fact, uh, this is too, too limitative because um, when we consider how we work, we have in fact lots of technique and they all have a name originating in Anma. For instance, we can rub the points and that's then called Keisatsu. We can knead and that's a Junitsu. There is the Apaku, apply pressure. Uh, apaku Ho, method of pressure, was in fact the first name Mr. Anamikoshi used to, to describe his technique. And um, he then adopted Shiatsu, which was a more modern name, and that was invented uh, by Mr. Tempeki Tamai. So in the, the first, first name of the practice of Mr. Namiko, she was Appaku, Appaku, apply pressure. We have uh, the vibration, which is called the Shinsen. We have the tapping, tapping gently. For instance, on the head, that's done Koda, and we have the... The, the squeezing and kneading at the same time and that is called anetsu and so on and so on there are nine different techniques in in anma 
So um, points can be treated uh, in a very different uh, and various ways. Um, about the charts, we talked about charts um, at the very beginning of this video, uh, charts available everywhere uh, with the points. Um, an acupuncturist would use them in a, in a very strict way because of the needle he has to know exactly where where to prick we in shiatsu we might uh, tend to consider the charts as as uh, traffic boards you know it's uh, uh, this direction and uh, after 200 meters turn right or left and, uh, st and uh, go around the roundabout. Um, meaning by that, uh, the, the tsubos, the points are where we feel they are. So the, the chart is an indication. And uh, Jacques-André Lavier, uh, also, although an acupuncturist, uh, gave uh, as good advice to the acupuncturists um, first try to find the point with the finger and rub it and then prick and you will know the, the exact place so charts are very good very useful but looking strictly at the chart you you can't uh, practice uh, shiatsu in fact you have to to learn the chart and you have to to develop your feeling at the same time. Um, Michel Odoul, who is an, another famous uh, French practitioner, wrote lots of uh, very interesting books on shiatsu and, and other topics, uh, says, um, I will quote him, um, in uh, Shiatsu Fundamental, La Philosophie, the title of his book, uh, says, uh, it is not uh, limited to, to, to the part when, when you apply a pressure, it goes beyond that. Each point we work on tries to touch the whole body and the gesture, gesture of the practitioner is not limited to the, the, the very point that's worked on to the symptom, but tries to reach what it it's figures in an energetic in an energetic way. So attitude and presence of the practitioner are major points of attention. And the, the points are gates, entry and exit gates also for the practitioner. That brings us to, to the necessity of being present and absent at the same time while practicing Shiatsu. So these were extra considerations um, about the way of working with points and I will end uh, this video by talking about two very interesting books uh, the one by Mr. Serizawa on Tsubo and uh, also one in French by Bernard Bouret um, it's Vademekum de Shiatsu Therapeutique so to end this talk about points, I'd like to introduce you to two major books on that topic. As we said, there are two gates, two approaches uh, possible um, for Shiatsu. Either you consider points in the first place or you consider meridians in the first place. <clears throat> and in fact, you always consider both. Um, there is that book by Mr. Katsusuke Serizawa. Mr. Serizawa was a very famous uh, practitioner of Anma, Shiatsu and uh, Eastern medicine in Japan. He earns many distinctions, many honors. Um, and uh, his book Tsubo has been uh, translated into English. Uh, he says from the very beginning on, there's nothing mystical about Eastern medicine, but it's uh, quite medical, like in the West, but uh, he makes an interest distinction between the West and the East by saying in the West you have to know exactly what, what kind of illness uh, there is you have to name it and then you give treatment in the East we don't need that uh, we we are just we have a more general a more holistic approach and um, I would like to quote him when he says um, Eastern therapy, particularly Tsubo therapy, is able to solve problems that seem unsolvable by Occidental methods because of the nature of its general approach. 
Eastern medicine acts on the belief that organic disorders reflect themselves at certain places of, on the body's surface, and these places are the tsubo. And conversely, that pressure or other treatment, as we have seen, there are many, many possible ways of uh, working with the hands. Pressure or other treatment on these places can not only relieve pathological symptoms, but also put the entire physical organism in good working condition. It's because Eastern therapy can be used for both chronic symptoms and for psychologically caused sickness that it offers hope for further, more complete agreement with the medical science of the West. And remember, Mr. Masunaga himself um, gave the psychology course in the school in Tokyo at the time and was very interested in the psychological aspects of illnesses, generally speaking. Um, that's uh, something I, I sometimes uh, say to, to people coming to my, to my practice room and saying there is no, no apparent cause to my problem and uh, nobody knows uh, what it is really. So my approach would be that one indeed uh, to say, well, if, if Western medicine doesn't know, I won't be able to name it. Uh, uh, either, but uh, I can try something to help you. And that's what uh, Mr. Kawada told us as well. Uh, just put your hands and uh, begin working. So that book by Mr. Serizawa um, is very interesting, makes uh, an inventory of uh, lots of problems and classifies them um, like this, he also uses accessories, um, sometimes very strange, like a paraffin bath or a hair dryer for stiff shoulders or um, even a, a beer bottle to, to message uh, the feet. Uh, so uses accessories and makes interesting categories, uh, giving a, a very wide range to shiatsu, in fact, like uh, sicknesses that are not strictly sicknesses, by which he means, for instance, cramps, hiccups, headaches, uh, motion sickness, hangover, insomnia, and so on. Then all illnesses of the respiratory, circulatory, alimentary, metabolic system, brain and nervous system, muscles and joints, of course and uh, eyes, ear, and nose, and teeth, and mouth, and skin diseases, juvenile sicknesses, female complaints, recovery from fatigue, and promotion of general health, and cosmetic treatment. It looks like uh, this. i show you one part of it. It looks like this. Um, so for every problem, he gives a symptomatology, he gives an etiology and also a kind of kata points you can practice in uh, some order to release and give relief. Another book, same kind but not quite in uh, French, is the Vademe Cum du Shiatsu Thérapeutique by Bernard Bouheré. Um, well, the approach is uh, similar by that there is a, a description and an etiology of uh, the problem. And then uh, <clears throat> Bernard gives the major points you, you certainly should practice if you want to, to tackle the problem. And then gives uh, a kata, but not exclusively, uh, points you should practice in some order, but uh, meridians and way, way different ways of treatment. So, two very good books if you want to approach Shiatsu through the, the gate, the, the aspect of points. That's it for the points, I think. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was uh, useful and understandable for you. And um, please tell me, I'm ready to make others, uh, all based on uh, the texts which are published on my blog. And I, I'll give you the address if you want to see the original in French. Hope you, you enjoyed it and wish you a very good day. See you soon.